let's go ahead and talk about my setup. Um, I, I'm still using the Red Cat, but this is uh, set up currently right now with my uh, Edge HD8 from Celestron. Uh, sitting on top of the Ioptron M27. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the GLMT3000. Um, this is a Wi-Fi router. Uh, it's Wi-Fi 6 uh, and it essentially allows for faster connection to the mount. So what I've done is um, back here is I've got it hooked up right now with a network cable. So we're going a network cable directly into the ASI Air Plus. Um, on here, I've got the plus rock, and what this is is a DC uh, converter to 5 volts and 3 amps. So basically, um, I had to do a little bit of a solder job down here, um, and I've got it wrapped in black tape. But basically, um, it's got the DC connector that plugs into the ASI Air Plus. I'm trying to follow this with the camera. And then here, it's got just a USB C converter, uh, which is doing the, the um, 5 volts, 3 amps and it just plugs in there to basically power everything. So uh, the setup is basically still the same as it's always been. Uh, I've got my ASI Air, I'm sorry, my AS2600 uh, uh, MM, the electronic auto focus, or filter wheel. Um, we've got the off-axis guider, the version two. I upgraded the camera to the ASI 174 MM, and then we have the electronic auto focuser. And then back here, we have a focus uh, connector that I bought from a Gina Astro, which basically connects it into the Celestron and allows me to focus it. And then it's got this cool plate that I can make, mount the ASI Air uh, Plus or Pro on. Uh, and then and essentially we've got Velcro in between here, uh, which is basically allowing me to Velcro so I can easily switch back and forth from the Pro to the Plus or vice versa. Um, and then essentially the other thing that we'll be talking about today is the Ioptron hand controller. So by default, uh, Ioptron, when they ship it to you, it's got uh, Wi-Fi set up on it. What I didn't realize is that there's an actual web interface for the Wi-Fi that you can log into and then you can make changes to it to change it from an AP mode to station mode. So traditionally what I've done with the ASI Air Plus is connected directly from uh, turn on station mode in the ASI Air Plus, which drops the Wi-Fi down to 2.4 gigahertz, which slows down the transfer rates, and then basically connected to uh, the Ioptron through station mode. Well now, because I can turn on station mode, I can do station mode, which will connect directly up into the MT3000. Um, the MT3000 has both a five gigahertz radio and also a separate 2.4 gigahertz radio. So I'm not gonna be losing any bandwidth with transfer speeds um, from the ASI Air Plus back to, uh, back to my uh, tablet when I'm imaging in the night skies. And because we're doing Wi-Fi 6, we have an additional 147 feet now from the device that I can connect to and it, it goes through walls. Uh, I've, I've left this in the house and went outside and I could still connect to it in the backyard uh, through multiple walls. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you everything I did. All right, so we're on the laptop, and I'm gonna. I'm already connected to the uh, MT3000, so I've got everything just right behind me, just so you can kind of see everything in frame. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and open up Edge, and then in Edge, uh, essentially, uh, we'll go to the default IP address which is of the MT3000, which is 192.168.8.1. So let's pull that up real quick and put in my password. All right, so welcome to the uh, the panel. Um, I won't dive too far into all this, but uh, you can do some stuff where you can change the colors and stuff. I set it to dark because I'm in a dark mode. That's my thing. So uh, essentially, this uh, the MT3000 does a lot of other functionalities short of what I'm using it for. Um, I'm just using it for astrophotography, but uh, you can use it to tether up your phone. You can... Um, do all kinds of fun stuff with it. It's got uh, network ports. You can set up uh, guest Wi-Fi on five gigahertz and two gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. It does a lot of really cool stuff. So on the Wi-Fi, basically all I did was uh, essentially I set up my five gigahertz network uh, with my password, hit it, and then my 2.4 gigahertz and then modified it and it was done. When you get connected and everything's connected, um, if you go to clients, it'll show everything that's connected. So right now I've got my laptop. I've got my ASI Air Plus. I've got the Ioptron HEM27, which is connecting to uh, the uh, MT3000. And then I've got my iPad over here, which I'm going to walk uh, through some stuff 
once we get there uh, with the ASI Air Plus to show you the difference in the speeds uh, before with the, the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz with the Wi-Fi 6. Um, so that's essentially the, the Wi-Fi settings. Um, it's key in here to copy IP addresses if you ever need them and stuff like that. So um, we'll 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 dive back into that in a second here. So uh, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and just connect directly into the HEM27 because that's what I originally did um, to figure out that it actually had a web interface. So uh, go to the HEM27 and connect. Should just take a second here. And when it's connected, uh, the default IP address, uh, you can go to the hand controller. And on the hand controller, if you go to uh, settings, go down to settings, and then under settings, you can go to, uh, you push the up button, and you can go to Wi-Fi options. And then in there, you can go to wireless status, and that'll show you the IP address. So the default IP is 10.10. .10, uh, or 10. Dot, yeah, 10.100.100.254, and hit enter. And then it's going to prompt you for the username and password. So the username is admin, and the password is admin. Now, just to back up real quick, uh, the way I found this is uh, I used MOBA Xterm, uh, inside mobile X term, if you open it up and you're connected to a network, you can go to tools and then network scanner. And then basically it'll automatically pick up the IP address that you have on your computer or the network you're connected to, which in this case, I'm connected to the, um, I'm connected to the hem. So if I hit scan, it's going to find my PC, which is 1.50. And then it's going to find the mount, which is 254. And then in here, when it was doing the scan, I was like, okay, cool. I'll just wait for the scan to finish up. Uh, and and then eventually it's going to pop to show that there's HTTP here, uh, which means that there's a web server that's running on it. So there you go. I found it. So I found the web server and essentially a web server uh, HTTP runs on port 80. So I was like, that's when I had all put it together. I was like, oh, there's a web server. So, um, so I popped in and again, I just tried admin, admin, and I got in. So the very first thing that I did on the HEM27 is I go to AP settings. Uh, and on the AP settings, I changed my Wi-Fi access information just because now it's more secure. Let's see. Uh, so in here, I essentially set my, uh, my network name. I hit save. It reboots the the Wi-Fi um, connection on the on the hand controller. It doesn't reboot the mount, just the Wi-Fi. Comes back in. You log back in, and then I went in and I changed the security from disabled to uh, WPA, and then I set a password for AAS and hit save, and it reboots again. Once it comes up. The next thing you do is go to station mode. And this is where you can uh, set up station mode so that you can connect to another Wi-Fi network. So again, this is what's cool about the MT3000 is that as soon as I get the mount connected to this, I can, whatever equipment that I plug into my mount, whether it's the ASI Air Plus or a PC or whatever, um, as long as I'm using the uh, GT3, uh, the G, um, sorry, the MT3000, I can connect to anything uh, and I can use everything because it's all connected to that network. So it's kind of nice. It keeps all my network all, all enclosed so I can connect to the mount. I can connect to the gear that I plug into all through the Wi-Fi and get back to the gear that I'm trying to get to. Uh, you know, if I'm doing like remote desktop to the PC or whatever, if I'm using the ASI Air software with the tablet or maybe I switch out my ASI Air Plus and I install StellarMate on it, and then I use the StellarMate application on my iPad and I connect back and everything is still all connecting to itself. So it's really cool. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just a second. So essentially... Um, I went in here, I, uh, you hit scan, and then what it'll do is it'll scan for all the networks that's available in the area. So uh, it found my JT Astro, which is, again, that 2.4 gigahertz network that I set up for it. Because uh, uh, the, the thing about the ioptron is it's only a 2.4 gigahertz network. It won't connect to a 5 gigahertz network. So you click on it, you hit OK, and then when you click on it and hit OK, it brings you back to this page, and you can set the encryption method, the password, and hit save. Now, I don't recall at this point if it rebooted a third time but it may have. Then when it came up again, the next time you just go to work mode and in here by default, this is set to AP mode only. So I'm using AP and station mode. So the nice thing about that is um, if I want to, if, if maybe I don't have my router with me, I can still connect to the mount with the AP mode and I would just connect to the, the Wi-Fi that I set up right here in the AP settings. I would connect to this and then basically it's an AP mode. So I could use like my cell phone and I could open up uh, what's that app. Uh, I was, 
uh, Sky Safari. So I could use Sky Safari to hook up, and then I could control them out um, if I was doing like uh, some just observing, um, and I didn't want to use like the hand controller and stuff like that. Um, and then with the station mode, it's allowing it to connect. Like I said, it's allowing the hand controller to connect to the MT3000. So at this point, I hit save, and I don't recall it could have rebooted one more time uh, with the Wi-Fi, and then at that point, it's done. So what's cool about this is because it's all on the same network now, so let's switch back over to the network. So we'll go back to uh, the JT, um, JT Astro here once it shows up, and then connect to it. So let's just log in again real quick. Oop. Okay, so let me just refresh this page real quick just to make sure. So everything is still all connected, so we're good to go. So essentially, I'll just minimize this real fast. And one thing to note really, really fast, if for some reason the iOptron is not connected, and you can go in here, what's really cool, and I, I basically modified it and gave everything its own name, like what it is. Um, but if the iOptron for some reason doesn't connect because sometimes it, it boots up instantly and then the ASI Air Plus or whatever device you're using is booting up and then the MT3000 is booting up, it, it doesn't get connected. Uh, you can go to menu uh, and then settings and then wireless settings. And then in there, there's an option to restart. And if you hit restart, it'll just reboot the Wi-Fi. And then when the Wi-Fi reboots, then it'll connect to the access point because the access point or the, the router wasn't up in time for it to connect. So it's just kind of sitting in limbo. So for whatever reason, if it doesn't show up, just restart it. Um, usually now that I have the setup configured, I'm just going to, once I get everything up and running and it's all, and I hear the beep from the ZWO, I can just go in and just restart the Wi-Fi. So I know everything's connected. All right, guys. So at this point, I'm basically connected on my iPad and I wanted to show you um, the speed connection um, from the um, the ASI Air Wi-Fi directly into uh, my iPad. So I'm essentially connected at this point to the ASI Air. I'm not using the MT3000. So I'm going to go ahead and open up ASI Air here. And then inside ASI Air, um, once I get in, what we'll do is we'll take a couple test shots. I just want to show you the speed that I'm used to seeing when I'm out at the site. So I've got it set to one second exposure here. And then as I take the picture, you're going to go ahead and see how long it takes to load. So the reason, again, why it's so slow is that essentially I had to set up station mode on the ASI Air Plus, and when you do that, um, it has to bring down the radio to 2.4 gigahertz. So here you can see the images are really slow um, when I take an image. So um, let me go ahead and take another one just to, to show you here. So as you can see, it's, it's pulling it down roughly about 2 megs uh, to 2.5 megs a second uh, when it's pulling down those images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the MT3000 now and basically um, show the huge difference uh, in terms of why I went with the MT3000. Because, again, the MT3000 has two radios. There's the, the 5 gigahertz radio and the 2.4 gigahertz radio that's connecting directly to the mount. And then I have an Ethernet cable going from the MT3000 into the ASI Air Pro or Plus. In this case, it's a Plus. So let's go ahead and take a picture. All right, so the picture takes, and wow, that was really fast. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with just taking an image over and over and over again, um, and I'm also trying to keep the video semi-small, uh, or short, I should say. So essentially, the breakdown is, you know, the MT3000, um, it's 5 gigahertz, it's way faster. I'm using direct Ethernet connection over here. Um, it's just way quicker than you're going to get normally connected. And the main reason why I did this is not only for the speed, but um, here with the ASI Air Plus, I can easily switch it out and I can throw in the ASI Air Pro. Um, I've got a bunch of SD cards over here at my desk. Here we go. A bunch of SD cards. And each one of those SD cards has a different operating system on it. I've got the, the stock ZWO software. I've got StellarMate. i got Astroberry. I've got Indigo Sky. Um, I can't remember what T stands for. Probably something I was doing. Uh, I'm not too sure. And then in here, I've got um, I've got um, Open Astro. Um, so I mean, I've just got so many different versions of the operating systems that you can run on these Raspberry Pis besides just the ZWO software. And the same goes for the ASI Air Plus, for that matter, too. It's just a little more difficult to to take apart and and load an image, um, but it's doable. 
So for me, I mean, these, these systems are really, really smooth. They work really, really well. Um, they're Raspberry Pis. They do Astro, you know, fantastically. And the big thing is I want to just be able to switch it in and out as I, as I go. So I can just, you know, switch it out. I've got the Velcro, Velcro on there, you know, put the screw in the back and, and we're good to go. Um, the other thing to note too is for some reason, if I wanted a PC in here, I could easily just drop in the PC and hook the PC up to the, to the MT3000. Uh, and essentially I have access to everything. Uh, I can connect into it through my iPad. I can connect to it from my uh, desktop and run like ASCOM. So I can do quite a bit of stuff with it uh, all with the same setup. And I also have the nice distance because um, Wi-Fi 6 has so much more uh, distance in terms of the length that you can get from being away from the mount. So for people that maybe can't, you know, that they have like a, they're set up outside and they can't, you know, do like a, a, a you know, direct ground buried cable or something like that or, or whatever. I think going with the Wi-Fi 6 now makes a lot more sense uh, just because you have that, that distance that you can get with Wi-Fi 6 that you couldn't do before um, with like, say, like Wi-Fi 4 or Wi-Fi 5. 5 was still pretty good, but it wasn't great. So uh, getting buzzed. Who's buzzing me right in the middle of my video? My wife wants to play word feud i better play word feud man so with that we'll talk to you later